class, um, I'm doing a couple video booths to cover a few issues that have come up recently. One of them is the issue of pyrrole versus purity. Pyrrole is a weaker base than purity. It has to do with the availability of the electrons. Okay, now, pyridine, if you were to draw an orbital picture of pyridine, what you would assume is that every atom in the ring is sp2 hybridized, and that is the way you would have looked at it in the fall. In doing this, you would have had you would have two two pairs of electrons in each pair of pi orbitals completely filled, and then the lone pair on the nitrogen would be existing in a in an orbital that's perpendicular to the pi system. Um, this orbital, according to hybridization theory, would be something like an sp2 orbital, and it would be perpendicular. And the way you should think about this is that this orbital is already filled with pi electrons. So these electrons are available. These are what I would have called today, today I was doing things with amino acids and peptides. This is what I would call free, a free lone pair. Okay? Now, if you were going to draw the resonance forms of pyridine, they would simply be benzenoid type resonance forms, or what we call kekele forms. A kekele form is what you would do for benzene. You would just show the pi electrons in the opposite formation, and it would not involve any delocalization of that lone pair because the lone pair is not part of that pi system or not part of that sort of railroad track for the electrons. This compound is an aromatic, and the hydrogens would show up at about, you know, in the seven, you know, the six to eight range in the um, NMR, but it has nothing to do with these electrons. It just has to do with the fact that it has six electrons in a ring, and there's conjugation through the ring, and there's a ring current. Um, pyrrol is also aromatic, but its aromaticity is dependent on this lone pair. Um, if I were going to draw an orbital diagram of pyrrol, it would, I mean, a kind of a rough orbital diagram, it would look like this. You would assume an sp2 hybridization for the nitrogen because this is an allylic site, and you would assume that the allylic site would drop down from sp3 hybridization to sp2 hybridization to have the advantage of having the lone pair delocalized through the pi system. And this is, this is an absolute fact because when you run an NMR spectrum of pyrrole, it does exhibit the ring current effect of an, an aromatic, which indicates that these electrons are circulating around this ring, and that includes the lone pair. So that's what the orbital diagram would look like. These electrons are tossed up into the um, pi system, and the hydrogen is what's sitting in the um, sp2 position. Okay. Now, one of the things that helps you to understand the basicity is to write the resonance forms. So what I'm going to, is there something wrong? Are we running out of, what's wrong? You're good. Okay. So what we're going to do is write the resonance forms. All right, how do you write resonance forms for this kind of system? It's very much like when you have an anion next to a double bond. Um, what we did, right, was we would push these in, push these out, and what you're showing, the story you're telling, is that the charge is at these two locations. It's not just at this one location. Some of you guys used a numbering system where you would put the new double bond between one and two and the charge at three. Okay, now, how do you do it with a lone pair? It's very similar. The story you would want to tell is that the charge can be at all these locations. So this is one, this is two, and this is three. I'm going to take this pair in, push these out onto the carbon. When I do this, I will get a plus charge at nitrogen and a negative charge at carbon. Okay? Um, why is that? Because this has no net charge. So now I have a bookkeeping positive charge on nitrogen, negative charge on carbon. How would I continue? This lone pair is now allylic to this double bond. So I would continue telling the story of all the locations that this charge is going to be at. Okay, and now I can keep going because it's an odd-membered ring. I'm going to be able to hit every site in the molecule. So I'll take this charge, bring it in, bring it out. Now again, all these structures that I'm drawing are charge separated, which means...
which means they're not as important. The real structure for pyrrole is the hybrid of all five of those structures, the weighted hybrid. Um, this is the most important form. The reason this is the most, most important form is it has no charge separation. Structures that have charge separation in them are less important. But the reason I wrote this out was so that you would think again about the fact that pyrrole is a weaker base than pyridine. Why is pyrrole a weaker base than pyridine? Because pyrrole's lone pair is delocalized and is actually existing on five different atoms. The fact that there's charge density on five different atoms means there's less concentrated charge, which means it's a weaker base. Pyridine, on the other hand, the the, not the charge, but the lone pair, is localized on the one atom, which makes it a better base. And this is why we always use pyridine in reactions as a proton scavenger. Okay, so that's the end of that. I want you to go over that and try to write out all those resonance forms. Thank you.